Hello and welcome to the Change Gang Podcast with me, your host, Laura Ordeal. I'm here to help you hold on to your sanity and your soul as you move through big change. I'm here to guide you from frustration to flow in your life, bridging the practical and the woo just for you. Let's go. All right. Welcome to the Week Change Gang. Here we go off into an adventure that I am so looking forward to. I have our Atla here and she's amazing. She is a, a medical astrologist, which I'm super excited to talk about, uh, along with an astro herbalist and a green witch. So my goodness, we need to talk for about four hours, but welcome. Our, I'm so glad to have you here. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So tell me what I, I, when I saw your information, I'm an astrologer and I have not heard of a medical astrologist. So I'm super excited for you to tell me a little bit about what that means and, and how you use that. So I'm kind of going to just step back a little bit and let you share about that for a minute. Yeah, definitely. So medical astrology is the use of a person's natal chart to determine the influences of the planets on the signs which govern the body parts to determine where imbalances are occurring in the body and potentially causing health issues that we then can fix once we determine where the imbalance is and how to rebalance the body. So in the case of using a natal chart for this, it's called a planetary health chart. So that's uh, what I use when I look at somebody's chart. And so the planets are the influences, like the sun is hot and drying, the moon is cold and moistening, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then each sign from Aries all the way down to Pisces governs the body part. So Aries starts at the head and Pisces ends in the feet. And whatever influence that sign is exerting on, let's say, Pisces, if it's the sun in Pisces, it can be a very hot, drying influence. Pisces being a water sign, it can be dried out too much and it can be causing issues. Typically, we see like hot, dry, inflammatory type issues with the sun being in maybe a, not a great aspect in somebody's chart or like, it's too close to Saturn or something, right? Like they're in conjunction with each other that can cause some issues. And then we would see like potentially like foot issues that are caused by inf- inflammation or something like that because it's in Pisces. And so that's what I look for to see. Also, it gives me a good base of like the nutrition of how somebody uses nutrition in their body and how their bodies work best to use nutrition. Each planet governs certain vitamins and minerals. Each sign governs a cell salt. And then I can use all of that to determine where someone's body might be struggling with certain nutrition nutrients. And then we can come up with a game plan on how to make sure that they get all of those that their body needs and how to work on some of the imbalances that I'm seeing to help them heal their bodies and fix whatever's ailing them. That is so much right there. I'm like I said, I'm an astrologer. (laughs) I was just like, like, boom, kind of over my head. So we're going to break it down just a little bit more. We're going to break it down just a little bit. So if I came to you Mm -hmm. today for a reading on the medical astrology side, you pull my chart up. What's the first thing that you're going to go look at? Well, it depends on what health problem you're having. Let's say, for example, that you come to me and you're having headaches all the time. The first place I'm going to look is where is your Aries placed? Because Aries rules the head. So if anybody's having a lot of headaches, it tends to be more of an Aries affliction. It also tends to be a Mars affliction because Mars rules Aries. So I would look to see where those two are placed in your chart and see what's going on with them first. And then we would kind of go from there. So when you say Aries, though, what if I have no planets in Aries? The houses make a difference, too, in which house it's placed in. Okay. So, I, yeah, I always look to see where Aries is. And then you can also see what's in maybe next to it. Whatever house is next to it might have planets in it or anything across from it in opposition might also have some planets in it. That could be reflexing across to Aries. So I always look where that is first for, like, headache. That's just a broad example. People come to me for all kinds of problems, but to make well, it easy for the podcast, that's I've had headaches on and off over my life. So mm-hmm. if I went to my chart and, or if you went to my chart and looked at it, I don't actually have any planets in Aries. So what would would you? And nor in the first house. So I don't know. Would you just kind of go, okay, well, what 
it's got to be based on something else or it's got to be developing from another source. Well, then we look where Mars is located. Mars, okay. All right. Because Mars rules Aries. And so because of that, Mars plays a big part in the influence because it's a more, it's a very hot, drying, inflammatory influence. And since it rules, and it also rules iron and it rules selenium and it rules, you know, just those type of processes in the body that, those phosphorus it rules phosphorus if you have low phosphorus you can actually tend toward having migraines and headaches more often i really look to see what's going on with your mars next so my my mars is in gemini in the sixth house what would that tell you right there sixth house is your house of health that's the second place that i always look in a chart is what planets and or signs are in the sixth house because that gives me an over Overall look at how your body is really designed to work and like your overall like constitution and with Gemini being in the sixth house your constitution with that mutable energy is kind of all over the place that means that some days some part of you is every part of you feels great other part other days nothing feels great other days only like your head hurts but everything else feels fine so your energy and how your body distributes that vital force varies so much so with gemini being in mars i mean it can lead to so many different things so mutable i'll tell you up front i have actually have three planets sitting there right in the in the sixth house in, in gemini and i have that's my sun my moon and and my mars that all sit right there together yeah and see that sun moon conjunction is rough because they're both hot but in medical astrology mars is hotter than the sun and so they're really heating each other up even more and then you have the moon which typically is moistening and cooling but it really can't compete against the sun and mars right so a lot of stuff that's going on yeah yeah that's just that's too much It, 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 it it's really good at balancing the sun it's not really good at balancing two hot planets right coming at it yeah, and the moon in Gemini leads to so many issues, too, because of the fact that Gemini is like that mutable air sign, so it's very drying. So you have very drying sun, a very drying Mars, and then the moon, which is in Gemini, which turns it the moon more on the dry side, too. So honestly, without actually going too deep into your chart, I would say a lot of the issues are from a lot of heat, dryness, and inflammation, particularly somewhere in the body. Well, that's interesting. Very interesting. So fascinating. So do you, if someone just comes and and says, well, I don't know that I, I almost, I don't know anyone that doesn't have something that they would come ask about, whether it's a headache or an ache or, you know, I mean, there's Mm -hmm. there's something. But if they came and and said to you, I just want to know kind of in general what you come up with, what you see, do you do that or do you tend to run more on someone coming to you looking for something? I definitely can do that, but typically people don't come to me for that stuff because they have something, right? And so they want to know why is this happening? What can we do to fix it? But people do come to me, though, to determine like safe surgery dates and whether or not a surgery they have coming up is like a safe time to have it and if they should switch those. So I get those a lot. I get ones where, can you tell me if this practitioner is going to be compatible with me and if it's somebody that I should see what are the odds of like you know me seeing them and then it not being a great connection and then potentially harm happening um so I get those I get those kind of things but it's very rare that anybody comes and is like I just want like a general health reading (laughs) yeah so when you do some of those things when you're looking at the surgeries when you're looking at the compatibilities with doctors or or working with a particular group of medical people or whatever it is that someone mm-hmm. might come to you and ask. Are you looking then at the the transits, the current placements of the planet, uh, as well as the natal chart? Are you looking at kind of how they interplay? We're looking at their natal chart with current transits and future transits, depending on when the surgery is. I typically look to make sure that the surgery is not within five days of a full moon occurring. Um, It's better to be within five days of the new moon for most surgeries, especially invasive ones that could have a lot of blood loss because the waters in the body are lower then and the chance of like hemorrhage and bleeding out are a lot less. I look to see where Mars is and Saturn are because those really can impede healing or, you know, uh, processes of getting through recovery and surgery. So that's good. Um, I look to see where Mars is as well because it determines it's the planet of like surgery and surgeons tend to be ruled by that so i look to see like what's going on with mars as for like 
how it's going to help the surgeon be better and do their job great or how it's going to possibly like lead to distractions or something that could lead to mistakes being made. So I look at that um, and then Saturn, I look where the moon is. I do look where like their sun is in placement for like the other transits that would be happening at that time, just because that governs our overall vital force. So I want to see how great their vital force is going to be at the time of the surgery, because if it's going to be on the lower end, it's not a great time to have surgery, right? Because you're going to have a really hard time recovering from said surgery if your vital force and your energy is kind of meh. And so uh, that's those are the main things that I look at. There's some nuanced things too, but for the sake of the podcast and not boring everybody to death those are the main things <laughs> well i think you gave them a good tip right there i mean uh, hopefully they caught it you're a good fast tiker you get a lot of information in there a lot of stuff going on there but one of the things you said in that in that wonderful information burst right there was that it's better to have surgeries around the new moon than it is around the full moon because our body is at yes. a point where where it's set up a little bit differently that's going to be i assume for everyone then right pretty much yeah it's very rare that there's anybody that i would look at and go oh it's better for you to have this invasive procedure on a full moon i mean it's very very rare plus everybody anybody who works in the hospital or in a healthcare setting will tell you that the full moon brings out all kinds of craziness in the hospital this is where we see the most mistakes most people having accidents so much hemorrhaging coding heart attacks it's not really a good time to be in the hospital anyway because everything's going crazy. So even if your surgery goes great, the chances of an issue happening after the procedure and then you not getting prompt care because everything else is going to shit in the hospital will be a possibility as well. So it's just best to uh, hold off. That's true. That's true. It does. They always You always talk to the first responders and, and the hospitals and those people and the full moon gets pretty interesting a lot of times. So I can see how it would be a little crazy and how more mistakes could kind of happen with all the craziness and, and everything yeah. going on. And then I would guess too that, and I'm guessing, so you can tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, I would guess also that, that by looking at someone's chart, you talk with them about fertility and those types of issues when it is a great time to be getting pregnant, if they're struggling with pregnancy, mm -hmm. maybe when to wait or adjust or, or what to do in their planning. Because it sounds like what you're doing is you're not just giving them information, you're giving them information uh, that's useful and that they can put into play. And I always think that's important because it's not just about the information. It's about being able to put it into play. Do you deal with a fair amount of people that come to you around fertility or planning? I do, actually. My specialty is women's hormonal health. So I see a lot of individuals for different reasons, but mainly for having something that corresponds to a hormonal um, change in the body. So fertility is one of the things that I do see people for. And I've had the privilege and the absolute honor of helping many women get pregnant and have that baby they've been struggling to have. So it, it makes me so happy. That's one of my favorite things to do. And I absolutely love when those clients come to see me. That is something I definitely do. And that is, again, pretty nuanced. But the main things that I would look at are like, their moon and the placement of their moon and the current transits and then the future transits of the moon. I look at Venus where she's placed in their chart and where her future transits are as well as Mars because even though Mars governs testosterone in the sperm typically it can help determine like their partner's best time to also be in this situation having the best chance and so I look at that. I had a client recently wanting to you know have a second baby and she came to me not because she actually had any health issues but she wanted to get everything as set up as perfectly as she could so her body was well nourished and had the best chance of success and then kind of know when was the best time and so looking at her chart I was able to give her that information and which nutrients she needed to really focus on that her body struggles with uptaking and storing more than others and give her a nice good plan of like here's step you know one through ten or whatever it came out to be of like what to really work on and she was like oh my god thank you so much she's like this is so informative and I feel so much more like prepared now to get pregnant and know that everything's going to be like 
okay. Well, and so part of your part of your skills, besides being the medical astrologist, is also an astro herbalist and the green witch. And so I'm assuming that as you're doing that work, you're bringing in those other skills to where you, maybe you you figure out the best herbs and the best nutrition and you talk about minerals and things like that to really mm-hmm. set the body up and and balance yeah. it out for save fertility or for upcoming surgery or even just to balance things out and have that in place to to be feeling the best you can feel because as women yes. it doesn't take much to get the hormones off just a little and and it does mm-hmm. feel like you do feel bad or crabby or sad or or whatever it is that's just yep. tilt a tiny bit. It makes a big mm-hmm. difference. Do it does you, make a big difference. A little bit like you're talking about with, with the medical part. Is that what you do with the herbs as well? You see, according to the chart, what are going to be the best herbs and minerals and vitamins and things for people to bring in? Yes, definitely. So while each planet governs vitamins and minerals, they also govern certain herbs as well. And so if I see that like the, their Mars is afflicted in their chart, Mars um, rules like iron, like I said, selenium, phosphorus. And so because of that, those minerals and vitamins are things they could struggle. It also rules B12 that they could be struggling to like take up properly, to store properly, to use as efficiently as possible. So we would want to work on, you know, increasing those in their diet. But there's also a lot of herbs that actually increase those. And one of the herbs ruled by Mars is nettles and stinging nettles in particular has a very high iron concentrate. And so that would be one of the herbs that we would start for someone who has like an afflicted Mars and maybe their body is struggling with, you know, maintaining their iron levels. So we would start them on like a daily infusion of nettles in the morning and possibly in the evening as well, depending on how much I see that they really need that. And, you know, things like that. There's other herbs, like if their son is not in the best position or like my, in my case, my son is right next to my Saturn. And so mine is like really being uh, worked on hard by Saturn being directly next to it and trying to suppress all of that goodness that the sun brings us. So I have to really work on my fat soluble vitamins that are governed by the sun, which are vitamin A, D, E, and K. And so my body really struggles with like taking those up and like really using them efficiently. So I had to make sure that my diet, my nutrition, the herbs that I use are high in those levels. That goes the same for clients. So yes, we do work on that um, as well. All of my stuff comes with like a herbal regimen. I make all of my own herbal preparations that are specific for each person based on their charts. Nobody gets a one size fits all anything um, from me because that's just not optimal, right? If every, if everything was a one size fits all, then we would all be like robots and we're not. Everybody has their own unique cosmic blueprint. And so I base all of the herbs on their cosmic blueprint and what their bodies need. You mentioned that uh, cosmic blueprint and design. Is that, is that based on the astrology that you're talking about? Or is that a mixture of something else along with the astrology? No, it's mainly the astrology. Everybody's body is unique and how it's designed and where the planets are located. I specifically look at the first house, the second house, the fifth house, the sixth house, and the tenth house for this because that really shows how a person's body optimally uses the nutrition, how it's like how their tastes are, so how they would best receive like nutrition. Like some people are like really visual eaters and the food has to look good and it doesn't matter what it tastes like. As long as it looks good, they'll gobble it down. And there's other people that if it smells terrible, but it looks great, they're still not going to eat it because it doesn't taste good and they're more of a taste. So how you're designed to really optimally take up nutrition and then how your body is designed to use those nutrients. And then when you use those nutrients in the optimal way for your body, I look at the 10th house for how how you can actually use that energy that you're getting then for whatever purpose you have in life. And so it really helps me see what their cosmic blueprint is and how to design like a nutrition plan and a herb plan and a protocol for that specific person. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw you under the bus again here with me. My 10th house has no planets in it. I have in line or do you look at the house itself? I look at whatever sign is ruling that house in your chart. Well, it's kind of a mix. It's It takes up Scorpio and Libra. 
So it's also based on what your rising sign is. So when I'm doing this piece, I usually like use the Placidius method because I like that the best. And I think it really helps me with like certain things. But when I'm doing the cosmic blueprint, whole house is best. So it's like, it's so Ah, weird. I have, I mix the two systems together. So it's the weirdest thing. Not a problem. I was just, so I was just trying to get like an example of, let's just say then that my 10th house is Scorpio and what would that mean in terms of nutrition? We'll just make something up. It's okay. It doesn't have to be mine. I was just using this example. <laughs> the score, the tenth house is how you like to be productive in life. Like mine's in Taurus, so I like to do things that are very practical, down to earth, that give me like the ability to be slow, steady energy, and like plow through things slowly throughout the day, right? So I have a nice steady energy. Scorpio is a fixed water sign, so it tends to meander a little bit. So you, again, want energy that's very, like, how you're uptaking your inner nutrients is very, again, like, kind of spread out throughout the day so that you have the energy to get through from the beginning of the day to the end of the day because of that fixed water energy that likes to stagnate. Fixed energy, fixed water is more like frozen water, what we think of, right? Like, so to keep it moving, you would need a lot of like high protein, high carbs to keep your body to that energy to move you through the day. Whereas like with me, with Taurus in the 10th house, I'm slow and steady, but I have that earth quality, that fixed earth quality, which is a lot harder to move than water can be right at times. And so I need high protein and high fat to keep my body moving throughout the day in a better way. And I get it. How it, how it kind of goes into play that, how you were describing it. Yeah. With, with the sign and it being fixed and, and all of that, that makes scary sense. So <laughs> it's always so fascinating to me how, how astrology can be used in so many mm-hmm. ways for so many things. And, and so it just gets wild and, and so interesting. So how I, I'm going to ask real quick and then we can, we can wrap it up. How did you even know? this was a thing because I didn't know all of this was even a thing until now meeting you. I I mean, I've heard of medical intuitives. And so I mm-hmm. thought when I saw that, well, maybe it runs along the same line as that. All the information is pretty much yeah. accessible everywhere. But how did you decide and move into and, and even know that that was that all of these are out there? Yes, good question, because I'm with you. Until I discovered it, I did not know that it was even like a branch of astrology (laughs) at all. Um, But yeah, apparently it was created kind of back in the late 1500s, early 1600s, and was used in all of the medical schools. It was a required knowledge for physicians to know. They had to pass an astrology exam after they got out of like medical school to make sure they knew all this stuff and could help really their patients the best. And it kind of fell out of favor in the early 1900s when more modern medicine moved into place. And so because of that, it's not something that all of us really know about anymore. I stumbled across it when I was looking for ways to heal my own body from issues that I was having. And the modern medicine system wasn't working and what they were offering wasn't fixing what I would like it to fix. And my body was getting worse instead of better. So I started looking down any avenue I could find for other ways to help my body. And I stumbled across a podcast called The Plant Path, and it's by Sage Apopham, and he is a medical astrologist, which I had never heard of and did not know that even existed at the time. Started listening to his podcast, reading his blog, and all this stuff, and I was like, this just makes sense. And at that point, I already had, I had gone and got myself two degrees in herbalism, so like I knew the herb side. I just didn't know this other system that kind of combined the herb side with the medical astrology side. Yeah. And so listening to him, I was like, hey, this makes sense, and this makes the herbal makes so much more sense because of how they correspond to things. And so I sought him out, used medical astrology to heal my own body and was like, hell yeah, this works great. Let's go. So he became my mentor and uh, taught me all I know. So I ended up getting a degree in medical astrology from him. And then I also did a second degree in medical astrology from a university in the UK just for some extra knowledge because never hurts to have more especially in astrology and uh yeah i've been doing it ever since and i love it and what was the name of that person the podcast person Saja popham it's s-a-j-a-h for his first name and the last name is p-o-p-h-a-m he is based in the pacific northwest wow cool thank you for sharing that i appreciate that yeah i agree there's always more to learn 
obviously, I mean, I just stumbled into this whole big melting pot of stuff I had no idea about. So it's fascinating to me that, that it's there. So if you don't mind, go ahead and tell everyone how they can get a hold of you, where they can find you. Let them know how to reach out to you. Yeah, definitely. So you can find me on Instagram under at Atla Astrology. You can find me at my website, atlaastrology.com. And you can find me on my own podcast. It's currently named The Herbal Liar, but that will be changing next week. So if you're listening to this and it's 11.5 or later of 2023, the new name is Alchemy Astrology and Astro Health. And that will be weekly episodes that I put out all about medical astrology and all of that. That's available, too, to just learn some more about all of this. Well, that is so cool. I love that uh, that you're changing. I love the name of your podcast that, that you're changing it to. The one you have is fine, but I think that sounds so cool and so on point because it is such a mix of alchemy that you're doing. You're, you're creating yeah. everything and it's just amazing. And I'm so glad that you do. And you do mention that you help so many women out there, not only with what we talked about with fertility, but just balancing hormones in general, being the healthiest mm-hmm. version of themselves that they can be. And uh, I want to say thank you for that. Thank you as a woman out there in the world who has suffered with some of that in my lifetime. It's it's a hard road. If I'd known someone like you, it, I'm sure it would have been much easier. Thanks for doing that. So, yeah. all right. Thanks for being here so much. I, I truly appreciate it. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. All right. Okay. Thanks, Change Gang. I hope that you go into the week and have a wonderful one. And boy, you just got a bunch of information to go look into and listen to and find out about and someone to reach out and follow and and learn more from her. Enjoy it. And I look forward to meeting you right here, same time next week. Ciao. I hope today's episode was interesting to you in some way and fun. If so, Hey, find someone to share it with. Maybe they need to hear it too. Or maybe they'll just enjoy it. If you'd like, go ahead and grab my tips on supercharging your success. It includes a free short meditation to do just that. You can find that at bit.ly slash supercharge your success. Until next time, happy day. Happy day.